This is Don Lanning, and we're here at uh, my class, Making Monsters 101. We've had a great week, and uh, well, I'm going to take you in and show you what we've been doing. Come on in. We got Casey on the phone there. Well, I think we're going to start with you. Give me that phone. <laughs> Give me that. Hey, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Here's Casey. Hey, Casey. How are you? Hi. I'm good, thank you. Fantastic. She's going to share her creature with us. This is the creature that I have made and sculpted this week. Beautiful. She is an aquatic alien, kind of resembling um, a sea star, if you will. I drew a lot of influ influence from uh, references, sea star re references. This stuff is amazing up here. It reminds me of architecture, but it also reminds me of starfish. Beautiful, and look at these soft forms she's got on the ears. Beautiful, and of course, I can see your style in there, and I love it. She's got those beautiful lips, and to go to those beautiful lips out of this architecture style stuff is just fantastic. I think you might have a little surprise on the back. <laughs> Why don't you sit down and take your time and turn the sculpture towards us? All right. So here on the back, hello. <laughs> we have... <laughs> A little alien. Oh my god, it's a twofer! <laughs> it's a twofer! <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little crab face, alien crab kind of crustacean like, and he's just parasitical latching onto the back of her head. Yeah. Isn't that great? Just well, a little bit of fun. <laughs> Casey and I were talking about this the other day. Um, on Star Trek Beyond, I would try to sculpt little faces in the back of our, our heads, and then I would have a joke with Joel Harlow and say, Look, you got a twofer. <laughs> Anyways, uh, wonderful. Now turn her back around for us and let's see the front view. Beautiful. It's just weird being in her presence. I love it. I love it. And I also get this feeling of a voice that says, Come with me. Let's dive the ocean's depths. <laughs> Look at this beautiful stuff she's got also on the neck kind of layered but also you can kind of feel the ocean in there as well you get an aquatic feel look at that beautiful light up there I'm just gonna come down and hang out with that oh that's me singing let's turn that down a little bit <laughs> well in the search for copyright free music I've exposed many of my friends this bizarre Peter Gabriel dying sound oh, yeah, it's so beautiful I love it can't wait to see your paint jobs. Can't wait to see how oh, you process you. this. It's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> the, col the colors of the ocean are yours to exploit. I love it. And plus, it's a twofer. You can't beat that. <laughs> Here, I'm going to give this back to you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> All right. Great work. Let's go on over here. Young man, every time I come near you, I make you do this. Look in here, say your full name. If you have a website or you have any place uh, that you'd like to tag or whatever, you All just right. mention that and then tell us about your sculpture. When I met Tarul, um, I kind of just started an Instagram, Irrational Minds. Um, so my idea for this actually kind of came out of just playing with the clay. I kind of had an idea that I wanted to do uh, kind of biomech, but more um, biological. And I kind of morphed into this, which now I, I feel is more of an insectoid, like warrior knight or something of that, uh, the visor uh, on the front. It for um, sure is a knight, right? You yeah, know. so you know, I've kind of got a mix of, of plates and insectoid and you know, how they kind of layer on each other. And then um, turn just trying for us, turn to for us. play with the textures and so, uh, show some parts that can move and other parts that are more static. You got cool plating going on the side, which is awesome. And I played with a little bit of webbing um, on the jaw and then on top of the um, uh, the back of the visor where it swoops in the back. I've tried to do some type of a membrane on the uh, on the top. Right. Give us a real profile, brother. Let's take a look. Yeah. Beautiful. Wonderful. Well, that's a big jump from Friday to today. 
and uh, we're hoping that you're going to mold this and make a latex masks. Definitely. He kept it fairly thin so that the uh, actor or the end user would be able to move and have movement, and uh, which was also facilitated by those wonderful layers or panels on the side. Mm -hmm. Those are also going to move beautifully. Anyways, brother, I appreciate your, all your hard work and your focus. Thanks for the help, Don. This also drives me crazy. I love it because I can feel that this is a plate that clearly is some kind of plate, calcified piece or fingernail material. But this stuff looks like it can compress and like it would hold on to something like that. Beautiful. Really beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Mikey, I'm going to stop you just for a second. I want you to look in the camera and say your full name for us. Michael Clays. And this is a, uh, like a hellbird creature. Yeah, I give it a little spin for yeah. So this thing is wild. I'm going to start back here, and then I'm going to turn this way. He's come on so strong with his detail. And we were doing a, he was doing rake marks, discovering and using the uh, uh, play zester. And he found that down in the trenches, he was able to get like a little pull, like a little organic pull. And now that was something that we normally would wipe out, but once again, he's looking at it, as he's doing the wipeout, he realizes that little detail feels like a stretch in between each fat roll of membrane. So he left it and has since come back and even sweetened it. This kind of stuff drives me crazy. Look at this, this is such a beautiful area. And also he's developed other different types of detail to plug in. And look at this, that fall is beautiful. Once again, another texture, another texture. He keeps changing topographies to get different effects. See you in a minute. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn it this way. This is our beak portion, and that just looks wild and wicked. I love it. The mechanical elements, but also more organic design. In these hard pieces up here, look at these swipes and wrinkles he's got. Uh, once again, I do a lot of that kind of stuff too, just to bring interest, but it seems to make sense here. Like this is a bony carapace that holds onto something that's more fleshy, moving this. And this is supposed to be the back of the creature, but I've identified it. For myself, personally, you never know what people are gonna bring to art, but they always bring themselves, sure, certainly. And so when I look at this, I see some kind of alien or otherworldly face. And even though that may not be what he intended, that's what I, my psyche brings to it, and I enjoy that. And I also love this. He hasn't really gotten into detailing this today, but the important thing was to get a presentation on our profile, and you can see a lot of great flow traveling with this. Thank you. Thank you. Give a shot of his shirt. This shirt is 20, 20 years old, 22 years old. <laughs> right on, man. Come on with me. You don't need to stop sculpting. But I want you to talk about this. I want you to tell us all about your concept. Look right in here and give us your full name. Uh, my name is Anna Kinigi. And um, she was inspired by Scandinavian folklore. Um, but I'm not sure if that's what she ended up as. She's some, some sort of like mythical wooden spirit or something. <laughs> but, um, well, it's part of the Scandinavian thing is in there with the. She has the symbol, the rune for the birch tree and also life. And then she has her guardian animal, the uh, wild boar, and he's with her, he's gonna be here. So she's like gazing out over her lands and trying to protect her forest, basically. That's what she's doing. Um, that's pretty much it, I think. Turn it, turn it for us a little bit, I'm just showcase. Turn it around. There's a lot of natural good. objects on there. Oh uh, yeah, I put moss and stuff. I'm gonna add some more and little tendrils and stuff like that. There's rocks that I sculpted. I made some branches, stuff like that. Wonderful. Well, once again, thank you for sharing this. Can you hold him up where you think he's gonna go? Yes, he's gonna be right here. He's right there. Let me turn it a little bit so she can get a shot. So is this her like familiar or her friend or? It's like a, what? like a guardian almost. And then also like when she sees stuff, cause mm -hmm. she doesn't have a mouth so she can't like 
See, he's also a messenger type guy. Okay. He'll run around. Um, but he's, yeah, he's her, her little guy. Wonderful. Well, he has a wonderful countenance. Come to the side here. We get this side shot here. I just love that because it looks like him and her are on their way to an adventure, some kind of Lord of the Rings <laughs> trek that's going to last eight months and culminate in the destruction of the evil empire. Thank God. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for your uh, hard work. I want everybody to know uh, everybody has been in here for the last 40 hours absolutely working as hard as they can. And once again, we're sharing the results with you now. Brother, I want you to stop for a moment. Uh, this design is such a triumph. I want to talk about this for a second. Um, he's come in here. I want you to know, everybody, uh, that this design, this concept, the architecture of it, the beauty of it, is all this man. We did one brief little demo that talked about erosion, and I showed him a few things. But this is so much yours. Please jump in. I want you to say your full name. Uh, and, and talk I'm Rob to Seal, and... My idea was for some sort of like ancient stone golem guardian thing, and my initial concept was a little ambitious, so I ended up scaling back a little bit due to time. But a lot of a lot of geometry and like hard angles, and this is kind of a practice and symmetry, because the detail only went in today. The last four days have just been trying to build up the shapes and stuff, but and it shows. It's <laughs> lots of cracking and stuff like that but yeah you know i give you two cents on this mm -hmm. i hate to say ancient astronaut because <laughs> <laughs> it kind of has like a space jockey feel a little bit <laughs> i'm gonna turn it whoa i'm gonna tilt it back there we go you guys check out this profile this is crazy stuff this almost feels like a gun to me or some <laughs> kind of mechanical apparati i don't know but clearly he's got a heavy armored kind of space suit but the profile just knocks me out. There's something sumo about it as well, in that we've got this dominant forehead. Clearly this character, some of us lead, lead with the hips, some of us lead with our uh, chin. I tend to lead with my brow when I'm walking. This character is all brow. He's gonna come and headbutt you and knock you out. Anyways, uh, I hate to say ancient astronaut, but every no, time I look fine. at this, that, that works for me. I get that feeling. And of course, when he's adding cracks, and a little bit of weathering so tastefully. In the demo I showed him about cracking, I really overdid it. He's done it very tastefully here. Look how realistic that looks. Just two dings. And once again, it's adding history to this piece. But uh, there's also a very ominous countenance in the eyes. He's got a crackly material. We don't even have eyes, but we have this incredible shadow that is evocative of eyes. Anyway, look at all this down in here. So there's a portion that's really probably experienced a bunch of impacts, so it's broken up quite a bit. Anyways, beautiful work. He's gonna take this home and continue working on it. We're very excited to see what you post in the future. We wanna see your paint jobs and all the stuff that you do. It's funny, because as I look at this, once again, we were so going home on the erosion. I love what you have here. I don't, I don't know that you wanna go too much more, but of course that's his decision. <laughs> Anyways, do you have a website or any kind of thing that you um, want to share with Facebook you? and Instagram, just Rob Seal, you can find me, and that's where I put most of my stuff. Perfect job. Thank you. Thank you. Right on. <laughs> uh, so here's my thing. Um, you guys know that I'm a big alien fan. Those of you that know me will see a patch for the Whalen yutani Company and what have you. Um, Whatever it is that catches your imagination is great. It certainly caught mine. It certainly caught this young man here. I want you to look over here. I want you to say your full name. Hey, guys. And talk about your concept. Um, my name's uh, Roger Baena. Um, you can find me on uh, Instagram as uh, Doom Theory Effects. Um, this is a uh, Egyptian uh, statuesque, um, very uh, Giger, biomechanical um, fe uh, female. Um, she's got a lot going on. <sighs> Very heavy as well. <laughs> Look at this, you guys. Look at that. <laughs> kind of starting this out. Um, it's going to be kind of like based on hieroglyphics and um, just texturing. Um, going to have fun with the bone and everything. But uh, I really like how this tubing and um, the placement of them has kind of manifested itself. Um, Giger means a hell of a lot to me. I'm really inspired by his uh, 
art form. Um, I've even gone so far as to uh, visit his uh, museum in Switzerland, and you know, well, the the fascination with him like keeps going on. But uh, the, yeah, this is what I've been working on for the past week, and it's it's been really fun. Uh, Don's helped me out uh, uh, a ton uh, to help me translate it, and um, and uh, kind of get in the groove of all this chaotic stuff going on here. But it's really fun. We love we love passing it on to you, and that's part of the deal. Um, when he goes back, he's going to probably go uh, work at ADI. Are you still going back? There? Yeah, I'm a mold maker at ADI, and uh, um, I've got some time to work on this in the meantime. But once again, you're also not just a mold maker, he's also a sculptor for sure. And I want you to look for his work in the future. And uh, uh, turn it head on to her one, one more time, just so we can get a beautiful shot of that. And just spend a minute and just pan around and find different fun stuff. Good job, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> As with everybody in the class, my hope is that you, you mold it and make a, a few copies and do a few different paint jobs. I think we're really going to wrap it right there. I want to give a brief thank you to all of uh, all of you out there. Uh, we did a brief post on uh, on Monday at the beginning of the class where we talked about what our concepts were, and so I was eager to come back today and show you the uh, the result of that meeting and the result of all this hard work. Uh, we are going to turn all these heads around tonight. We're going to take still photographs, and everybody's going to be posting uh, coming up here on the weekend. Uh, I want you to support and greet and welcome these new artists to our community. Um, I want to thank Berman Industries for supplying us with our play, uh, AFA in Burbank for uh, supplying us with our head forms, and most importantly the students uh, for coming in and once again really buckling down and uh, really diving in hard. This was an intense class. And uh, we'll be posting also, I hope, a group picture tonight where everybody has got their sculpture uh, in front of them and we're all lined up together and I think you'll all be astonished at the amount of work that was done. I want to thank Joel Harlow and company for letting me take the week off to come do this joyous thing. Uh, teaching has uh, become a real love for me in my life. I'm uh, still working on movies. I just worked on uh, Lost in Space and uh, I got some wonderful stuff coming out. But uh, to come in here with these fine folks and spend the week, it pumps me up. It makes me strong. And uh, uh, what a wonderful week we've had here.